talk to you guys about Thanksgiving. I don't know what your take is on the different sides you're gonna make, but it's gonna be too hard for me to like cook them all live for you guys, but I do wanna give you guys some ideas on what Thanksgiving sides mean to me and what I'm doing. And you can do your own thing. This is just what I'm doing. So I like to kind of, you know, talk about it a little bit. To me, Thanksgiving is all about comfort food. It's about food we were raised on. It's the memory of that food. It's what our grandma made. It's what our significant other likes. So to me, Thanksgiving isn't necessarily a time to bring out the brand new bougie recipe. Maybe do one thing new um, so that if it's not a hit, you've got all the other like tried and true recipes. So um, I like to make a few things ahead of time. Like today I'm gonna do a few things and I think it's good making pistachio water something. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Scott. So anyway, I'm gonna give you some ideas. I'm gonna do some videos throughout the day but I wanna kinda give you guys some of my tips, I guess, if you will. If you're running to the store, it's gonna be crazy. You have, obviously you have your turkey, hopefully. Um, if it's frozen, hopefully you've been thawing it for days in your refrigerator. If not, get a fresh turkey. They're the best. Trader Joe's, Sprout, my friends at Corner Butcher Shop have beautiful um, Sheldon Farm turkeys that are raised without antibiotics and they're never frozen. So you don't have to worry if you're freaking out about, oh my gosh, my turkey's solid as a rock right now. Just go get a fresh one and save the frozen one and put it in your smoker, deep fry it later. I don't know. It's up to you. So I'm gonna do a couple of things today and I wanna kinda of give you guys some ideas on maybe some of those comfort foods that you've always made or grandma made or your mom made or like me, my husband, like he has to have certain things and you wanna accommodate that. So maybe you can elevate it just a little bit. A couple things that I'm gonna be making today, I'm gonna to be making stuffing. And um, to me, this is what I make. Again, you can alternate it however you want, but I like to use sourdough. So I have some sourdough that I've made myself. Um, you can buy just an artisan type sourdough. Don't buy like, um, you know what I'm talking about, like a like slice that looks like a loaf of bread. Like buy like an artisan like loaf of sourdough that's, that's rustic. Um, and you wanna cut it up or tear it up and you wanna toast it off in the oven. So I've got um, some that I had frozen from last week that I made, so I'm gonna do sourdough. And the reason I like sourdough bread is it's, it really holds up it, you know, in the stuffing. It doesn't kind of break down. Sometimes if you use like white bread or whatever, it just kind of gets like mush. And I know a lot of people, I was shocked how many people are using like the stove top stuffing box. And I'm not judging if you do that, but you don't need to do that. You can use um, your own bread. You don't have to make it, you can buy it. And it just tastes so much better and it's not processed. There's so much in the news today about all this processed food that we're eating is making us sick and there's a reason why. So, um, hey Packy. Um, okay, another bread I like to use is challah. It's, it's spelled C-H-A-L-L-A-H, but it's pronounced challah. It's an egg bread. A brioche would be nice as well. Eggy breads um, are really luxurious. They're like, they're rich. They have a really nice texture. And so I'm gonna use a challah with my sourdough. And so I will cube this up and I will toast it off in the oven. You want it really toasty. Um, and then you wanna just stick it out on the counter and just let it sit there, cause you want it really dry. Um, I use a tried and true Jimmy Dean sage sausage. That's right, Jimmy Dean, you know bougie sausage here. Jimmy Dean sage sausage. I have used this for years, it works great. So I will be showing you a recipe. I use cremini mushrooms in it. It's gonna have celery, onions, shallot. Um, I do dried Bing cherries. You could do um, you could do cranberries, whatever you want to do. You could do apples if you want to, but I use cherries. I just sell, I know I sell tickets to my Thanksgiving table. No, what would happen is I would like do my Thanksgiving and I would be like so nervous my turkey would be burned. It'd be like the Christmas vacation turkey where they and it's like <laughs> so. Sometimes I'm great. Sometimes I suck. You're staying home with your fur babies and your family goes to Anaheim. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, you can come watch me cook, Packy. Just come on over. Packy, you can come over. I know that you're cool. Packy is the best. She she sold my house for me. She's a great real estate agent. Okay, so um, what you need is you need celery. If you wanna make this with me later, it's celery, onion, good butter. You want turkey stock or chicken stock. Um, Jimmy Dane sausage. Uh, I like pecans in it dried Bing cherries or cranberries. Um, what else, what else, what else? Of course, sage, parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I don't know if you can see back here, but I've got all my herbs 
for my garden. You can also do, you know, dried too. I, I kind of layer them. I like both. So rub sage, you could do a poultry seasoning if you like to buy that just kind of together. Thyme, rosemary, all those good things, salt and pepper. So this uh, stuffing, it has all the notes. Um, the sausage is savory. You've got that tangy sourdough bread in there. You've got that luxurious challah bread that's eggy and ooh, it's like, it's like a love hug. Um, the Bing cherries are slightly tart and a little sweet, so it kind of adds that sweetness to it. The nut kind of just gives a little texture in there. The mushrooms have that meaty, you know, when you're using mushrooms, if you uh, saute them first, and I'm going to be cooking them in with my onion, celery, uh, shallot, and um, onion, celery, shallot, and mushrooms together in my sage sausage. I'll cook it all together. So it's cooking in that sausage fat and getting all like caramelized and delicious. So it just, it, it's a really beautiful dish and you can butter it and put it into a covered um, container and then you can put it in the oven tomorrow. So it's like done, it's easier, okay? I'm also gonna do my mashed potatoes. My tip for that, I probably won't do a video on that because it's like, it's I'm gonna tell you how to do it. So what you wanna do, if you don't already have them, I think um, Yukon Gold potatoes, and they come in all kinds of varieties, make the best potatoes. So I don't do the russets. I don't, I, there's nothing wrong with them. If you want to do them, that's fine. But the Yukon Golds, they're already looking so buttery. So like the texture is like nicer. I think they're not as mealy as like a russet potato. Um, and the Yukon Golds are just, they are buttery. Like they just naturally are buttery. That's the way they taste and look. So I boil, I peel them, cube them, boil them in salted, please salt your water. You want to season your water. Um, when they're done, I actually leave them in the pot, drain the water out, and I'm going to add two sticks of butter, yes, two, and I'm going to add a brick of cream cheese, and I'm going to use my hand mixer, and I'm going to mix them in there and whip them. I'm also going to have some heavy whipping cream on hand to just, as I need to, pour it in there, liberally salt and pepper to taste, and you can add roasted garlic, you can add herbs, whatever, but they are the best mashed potatoes two sticks of butter, one brick of cream cheese, okay? And a little whipping cream as needed to get them whipped. They're velvety, they are beautiful. Don't to add too much cream, you want them to be kind of stiff because you're gonna make your little volcano of potatoes for your gravy, right? So good mashed potatoes, that's, that's, my, that's my tip on mashed potatoes. And of course you can add herbs in there if you want to. And like I said, if you wanna do garlic, I don't because I want it to be all about the turkey and the turkey gravy and I don't want any other flavors going on in there. Um, herbs would be great, but I don't think I would do garlic in mine, but you can. Like if you're doing these another time with another meal, for sure add the garlic. I'm gonna do an elevated, slightly elevated green bean casserole. So my husband loves the Campbell soup, you know, canned green beans, he loves that. So. I'm gonna, you know, accommodate him in some way. You're gonna add the cream cheese to your potato. Yeah, I'm telling you, cream cheese and potatoes, it, it's so good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for my elevated green bean casserole is instead of using canned green beans, I'm gonna use Heroclover. Heroclover is just a French word for green bean. It's just a bougie word. Um, they come trimmed in a lot of places. You're gonna, um, you're gonna boil them in salted water for like two to three minutes and then you're gonna put them in ice cold water. And the reason you do that is you wanna preserve the color. They, t they, they tend to lose their color unless you put them immediately in an ice bath. So you're gonna boil them, you trim them up, however you wanna trim them, if you wanna cut them in half, if you like the ends cut off, however you like to prepare them. They're ready to go like this. Some people hate the little ends. Do You do you, I'll do me. Um, you're gonna just boil them really quickly, like two, two and a half minutes, put them in an ice bath, put them off to the side, then you're going to take um, some butter and I'm gonna also use fresh mushrooms. I'm gonna saute mushrooms, onion. I'm gonna use a shallot, more of a shallot in this one. And what am I doing in this one? Oh, um, what am I doing? Oh, pancetta. See, I can't even keep my mind straight with all these ingredients. I'm gonna use some pancetta in there. You could use bacon, you could do lardons, which is just a fancy word, again, for slicing really like matchstick size pieces of bacon. Um, the bacon and the mushroom are going to add like this really beautiful, rich flavor to your green bean casserole. And the shallot is nice too. So um, I'm gonna use Trader Joe's, has a really nice, somebody's at my front door. Sorry, I have ring. <laughs> I have a good alarm system. 
Um, I'm using their condensed, I know this is backwards, but it's their cream of mushroom, portobello mushroom soup. I think this is a great hack. I mean, it's very easy to make your own cream of mushroom soup. I kind of showed you how to do that when I did my beef stroganoff video, which is on my Foodie Princess YouTube. But this works great and it's delicious. It has a very rich flavor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use the canned Trader Joe's green beans, you can, or the um, fried, fried onions. Now, if you wanna make your own, that's even better. And again, you make them with shallots and, and flour and you just deep fry them and season them. Easy to do, but I know a lot of us are used to opening a can, so I'm trying to show you approachable ways to make your food a little bit better without increasing a lot of the effort or making you feel like, oh, it's so hard, okay? So if you wanna go the extra route and make them from scratch, good for you. If you don't want to, it's okay. Trader Joe's has got you. I think these taste better than the jerky ones from the, the grocery store, but those will work too. It's all good. So the green bean casserole, again, is going to have pancetta. Um, you're gonna saute shallot, and I'm gonna do a video on this later. I'm just kind of telling you. Um, the pancetta and the mushroom are gonna add like a really nice flavor in there. You're gonna use your hair clover. You can get it frozen too, or fresh. I, I suggest the fresh. And that replaces that sodium-filled canned green bean that's so soggy and so flavorless. And the texture's so bad, it's just, it's like mush, right? Anyway, we don't have to use that food anymore. We can, we can elevate it without really increasing the effort. Um, I'm gonna talk about what I'm doing with my turkey. I did videos on a lot of this stuff already. Go to the Foodie Princess YouTube. I did turkey. I did compound butter, which is herbs and butter with a little uh, lemon or orange zest in it. And you put it under the skin and then you smear it on top of the skin and you put it inside the cavity. And it makes your turkey beautiful when you slice it. That butter and the herb under the skin just kind of like as it cooks, it's melting into the flesh of the turkey. And when you slice the breast, you're gonna see a ribbon of herbs that you've made in that compound butter. Super easy, it's a, a stick of butter, let it get room temp. Take your parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I do put a little uh, uh, orange or lemon zest in it. You know how to zest a, a piece of fruit? You just want the, the outer edge of it. Just a little bit. Don't put the juice in because the juice doesn't mix with the butter. And then you're going to just put, you put it in wax paper and just roll it up and then it becomes a tube. Um, and you can save that for later or just use it fresh. And you're going to separate the skin from the turkey. You're going to be sticking your hand in there and getting it under, and then whatever's left over, you could take olive oil on the outside and a little bit more of that butter, and then I shove in the cavity, um, season the cavity as well. I'm gonna season it with um, salt and pepper, of course, all over the turkey, and then I'm gonna put some citrus in there. I'm gonna put some sliced oranges, sliced lemons, and then I'll put like some celery stock, fresh herbs, because all those aromatics, that's what we call aromatics, are going to be seasoning your turkey as it's cooking. Somebody's at my door. <laughs> I think it's a delivery man, maybe. Anyway, I guess I have to go because somebody's at my door, but I'll be back later to talk about what I'm doing. So I can't tell you what time because I'm kind of all over the place, but if you miss any, they're gonna be my Foodie Princess YouTube. So I'll be back later and join me if you want to. If you don't, just go to my, just go to my YouTube. Okay guys, I gotta get my door.